Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Nintendo Entertainment Podcast. I am Trey Force Todd, and joining me today is Tellius Tyler. No! Camilla lost! No! Oh, oh yeah, we're going to be talking about that. And also joining I'm us actually is... happy about that. I yeah, was right, honored. Right, save it, save it for the save it for the news thing, man. Uh, and also joining us today is wait, wait a minute, what's what is this? There's there's no one else here. That's just, what I was saying. I was just tributing being Tyler. Will. I was giving Will a tribute by acting as though I was Will. Personally, I am thrilled that Camilla lost. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I I'm used, so used to Will being here. I'm not used to you actually attempting to impersonate he who yeah. is Will. Yes. Who we will not forget after he came down with a bad case of Malaysia. Um, still a country. Be... Still what? a country. It's still right, a country. Right, country. Not yeah. a disease. Country. Not a disease. Uh, right. Uh, so we And then, ironically, ladies and gentlemen, we tried to get not one but two different co-hosts on tonight's show. Uh, our dear friend Crom Cho, who was just so busy she couldn't do it. And then we were going to get the return of Koopa Keith, but then he got screwed at work. So it's just like... Okay, fine. We'll do this ourselves. We have we have the technology. So, uh, we got a, a seriously like a packed show for you today. So we're just gonna start right with what have you been playing? Uh, I'll go first because I honestly haven't been playing much. I mean, I had just been so busy the last week or so, and I I've only honestly been able to play a Fire Emblem Heroes, which isn't a bad thing because you know there's a lot of good stuff going on that we'll be talking about very soon. Uh, there's a new Tempest Trials mini, which I've been playing, and I'm at, uh, let's see, I'm at like 22,000 right now, I think, give or take. Nice. Thank you. So, you know, I'm definitely going to hit that 50,000, which is great, because I want all the orbs I can get, so I can summon he who is Vanguard Ike. So, yeah, like, that's my new thing now. It's like, I will have the Ike trifecta. It will happen. I wish they gave us Vanguard Ike for free. Like we might get him for free, um, but it's just, yeah. uh, I really needed him. Yeah, I can't risk a, that not happening because the fan base is so unpredictable, as we'll be talking about very, very soon. So it's just like, uh, yeah. So that, that's basically all I've been playing, just because I've been so busy that all I've been able to do is is play uh, is. Yo, get on my phone and relax and try online at the end of the night and play Heroes. Like, I was playing Heroes before I uh, came on to the podcast so I could try and get my uh, Tempest Trials score up, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've been playing the heck out of this Tempest Trials, too. The last one, I barely got to the, the uh, 50,000 on. This one, I've been super busy. It's weird. I've been super busy, and yet my Fire Emblem Heroes time goes up when I'm busy, because I guess I don't have time to, like, sit down and start, like, playing my Switch. So I have... 28,000 put 28,000 points on the second day. That's a lot of playing. Um, that's a lot of time wasting, uh, and a lot of hero merit grinding. Um, but I've also been playing Celeste still, and I just pretty much finished. I have one more challenge to go, and I am not excited to start it, but I am definitely excited to beat it. Um, I'll be writing a review. Uh, probably tomorrow. So by the time you're listening to this, um, it'll probably be up on Saturday. Um, and the game is fantastic. I'm going to give it a ten. Um, it's not. It's not actually perfect, but I can't. Like our scale goes, it's more ten than nine, and our scale doesn't have a thing in between. So I'm just going to give it the perfect ten. Uh, the story is amazing. Uh, the graphics are amazing. The music is just absolutely phenomenal. Perhaps it's one of the best soundtracks I've ever heard. Um, and the 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 way that the gameplay kind of ties in with the theme is is just it's awesome. Like the 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 game really takes like tackles anxiety and depression and uh, panic attacks and all like like you know like heavy stuff. Um, but it's about overcoming that. And the game the game itself is super hard. So you know you're constantly dying, you're constantly failing. But when you overcome it, it feels so great. And then you know it, in the context of the the story, it it, it feels even better. Um, the one thing I will say is that this game is freaking hard. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I know I mentioned that it's hard. It's really hard. Like, are you saying it, it's hard? It's really. It's like it's <laughs> it's it's harder to say what is more great: my love for Sonic or the difficulty of Celeste. Ooh, <laughs> the, that's, that's wow. That's palpable. It is. <laughs> it is because the original like run through of the the game, like there's the A side, there's the standard levels. Uh, and there are seven of them to roll the credits, and those are like they're fun, um, and they're they're difficult, but they're not brutal. Like you'll beat those probably in five hours. I think it took me five or six hours to beat those. 
Um, but then you unlock, you have to find a bunch of secrets. In every level, there's secrets that are hidden. It really, a lot of the game, it's weird. It kind of reminds me of Donkey Kong Country. Not uh-huh. in, like, super gameplay, but in, like, if you played those old games, the, there are secrets in every corner. Um, yeah. And Celeste is no exception. And some of them are really well hidden. So, like, you're going to be you're gonna be searching. Um, but it's definitely worth it to go find them all. Because once you do, you unlock uh, the, this bonus level called the Core. And that's really hard. So if you beat that, you're thinking, okay, you know, I've done it. But no, then every level has a hidden cassette tape with a B-side. And those B-sides are like challenging, challenge mode, basically. Uh, and those levels get intense. So like the, the earlier ones are doable, but come the final, like seven, or, like level seven and eight, the bonus level has a bonus level. And the, the actual ending of the game has, a, like, its bonus level is brutal. They're just... I, I after I beat it, I was like, "Sweet, I've done it." But no, then I get a note that says, "Do you want a real challenge?" So it hadn't been challenging enough. Come try the seasides. So the bonus levels have bonus levels, <laughs> and the bonus levels, bonus levels, will make you want to rip your hair out. Like they, they are so. Some of them aren't that bad. One of them I think I beat in like six tries or something. It was really easy, but most of them are. It just on another universe, you have to be perfect, and you have to be perfect for like 45 seconds of like, you can't be a pixel off or else you're going to get sent back. Then, I'm not even done yet, then there are golden strawberries which get added to every single level. Uh, I saw a tweet about this, you're like, there's a special place in the underworld for people who thought that golden strawberries were a good idea. <laughs> yes, because the golden strawberries... They're in every level, the A-side, the B-side, and the C-side. And once you touch the golden strawberry at the beginning of the level, you have to beat the whole thing in one run-through. So it's each stage is broken up into mini screens. Like There's probably like 30 screens per stage. But you have to beat every single one of those stages without dying, or else you go back to the very first one. Like The game's not frustrating when you're playing it the first time through, especially. Some of the C-sides are definitely frustrating. They're so hard. But the... A sides and really most of the B sides aren't that difficult or frustrating because when you lose, you, it takes like a half second. You respawn and you try again, and it takes you maybe two seconds to get back to where you died. But when you get these stupid golden strawberries, you go back to the very beginning when you die, and it just it adds another die. Like if you want to complete this game one hundred percent, you have to be insane. You have to be crazy. Like it is. I don't think I'm going to ever do it hundred percent. Like I have to beat one more C side, and then I think I'm done. However, it is an amazing game, and if you like platformers, it's only twenty dollars. It is it's a must buy, especially especially on Switch where you can take it anywhere. It's a it's a must buy game. It's it's definitely one that you can't miss. There you go. Yeah, I just I've been seeing all your tweets and gameplay videos about Celeste, and I then I read a review from another side and they gave it a perfect score as well, and it's just like ah oh, didn't I, well, again we saw this in the Nintendo Direct a, a few back. And it's just like, oh, that's okay, it's cool, it's Celeste, and whatnot. And like now it's just like this big, massive thing. Yeah, So it's... yeah, it, it has blown up. The, oh, the one thing, I forgot to say the one thing I don't like. Uh, it, like I mean, I like the difficulty. The one thing I don't like, and it's actually a big deal, it sounds like such a small thing, but when you're, like, so you can dash in the air, and you can replenish your dash by get, catching these diamonds that are, like, they're strategically placed so you'll get a diamond and it'll refresh your jump the game like freezes when you break through it to show you that you've broken through the diamond but it like you you're the buttons that you press then don't do anything and when you have to be pixel perfect frame perfect tenth of a second perfect that little delay throws you off and it you will die like that a lot and it's it's a it's it's the one of the few design errors in the game like you should definitely just break through it without the game freezing up but it does like to emphasize it it's like smash and then you'll be like, I'm trying to dash, and then it won't dash right when you hit it, and then you'll die, and it's really, really, really irritating. Yeah, I've I've, I've played a few games like that before. Uh, so, but hey, at least, at least, but you're still enjoying it, so that that's 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 the important. Yes, it it is a must own game. All right. Well, man, man we we seem to go by through that segment pretty quickly. Okay then. Uh, well, let's let's move it on because hold on. We... I think uh, Will has been playing Overwatch uh, and yeah. Fire Emblem Heroes. And... Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Next. No, I, 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 you're probably right. You're, <laughs> you're guaranteed to have Fire Emblem Heroes thing. Uh, so uh, like like I said, we have this has been a, a literally a massive week 
for Switch news and uh, mobile news and just Nintendo news. It's honestly absolutely insane. Uh, so, it's time to go down the warp pipe. All right, we're going to start off with uh, news that I know Tyler and the spirit of Will wants to talk about. And that is, of course, uh, Fire Emblem Heroes. Because in the course of a few days, we've gotten not only the results of the Choose Your Legends 2 event, but also a, a very special episode of Faye Channel. So uh, what do you want to talk about first, Tyler? Oh, man. Well, I, I really want to jump into the Choose Your Legends result okay. because me and Will are both heated about this. Uh, and in honor of Will's spirit, I think it's a good yeah. spot to begin. I agree. Um, first of all, so the, out of nowhere, the winners were Hector... And a frame. They were still le- they were leaders at halftime. Yeah, they were leaders la- the last time we talked. So you know that that was fascinating that that didn't change. So they held on. Celica held on. Yeah, Celica. Yeah. However, Camilla, everybody's least favorite character except for Will. <laughs> <laughs> Don't push uh... it. Don't push it. <laughs> Shout out to Miss Hillary. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cam- I, Camilla, whatever. She lost. She got she lost. Passed. A- a- but by who is the most shocking thing? Indeed. Veronica. From yeah. Fire Emblem Heroes, yeah. like the, the leader of Embla, somehow won. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't believe it either. I'm just like, I'm, I was like, oh hey, let's see who won. Then like looking at the guys, oh look, Hector, Frame, nice, nice, glad to see they held on. Celica, very nice. Veronica, because <laughs> she was, was she, she was fourth last time, wasn't she? Because it was yeah, Erica was three, so she jumped Erica and Kamiya to. You might even been the end. fifth actually. No. It, it, maybe it was fourth. I guess it doesn't matter. She jumped doesn't a lot matter. of people to get up there. Like it, it was it was it was crazy that she that she uh came out on top. Uh I, I was just uh, yeah, she actually was fifth. Azura was fourth. I oh was, wow. So I she jumped three people in the she course of a people. few days. I think a lot of people really do like her. Like they want her to and she she's a, like she's one of the more fleshed out characters in Fire Emblem Heroes where they really haven't done a ton of character development. Although recently they have been doing a better job. Like I actually like Alphonse now. Alphonse yeah. is my favorite of the Asker trio. Um but Veronica's always kind of been a more interesting character. Uh and people wanted a Fire Emblem Heroes like OC to make it in as as a bonus character and how they're going to do it with her being a villain is fascinating. Um so I'm I'm glad that that she made it I'm really mad though, and you know I'm really mad about this time. That Marth actually had the second highest votes out of every character. Technically did. Split over two games, and they didn't combine his votes, so he got a third and and eleventh. Uh, when really he should have passed the frame for second. So if they end up giving him a costume, which they should, and I think that they might, because uh, if you go to the results page, they have a Veronica, a Celica, Hector, and a Fram and Marth all standing next to each other on like like the background. So I'm hoping that they give Marth the justice that he deserves, um, <laughs> and gives him a bonus thing. But I'm so mad that didn't combine his votes because he did get Hector was the only character who got more total votes than Marth, which I'm angry about. It's it's one of those things like because Marth has technically been in multiple games and. Yeah, they probably should have just combined him because that, that's probably how the split came because people played it either the first game or the original game, or sorry, original game or Shadow Dragon. Right. So, you know, I, I, I see how that happened, but, uh, I, man, again, just fascinating because the top 10 for the females had Veronica and Loki. Now, Loki, <laughs> as, as the spirit of Will would proclaim, <laughs> is, is total fan service. Uh, I was trying to think of the word he would say, but I can't think of it now, so I'm not going to. I probably, I probably I just say keep it wrong. I keep hearing Will say Nani in my head. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Nani? Nani? Uh, but Veronica. Like, remember, she was just like the, the antagonist character. Then it really started to flesh her out. We found out about the disease in her family and how she treats Zacharias and how originally she treated Loki before Loki became Loki. Uh, and, and then, like, in the recent episodes where she stood at the Surtur, which was awesome... You know, I-, I can see why people like Veronica, but I didn't expect her to jump this high. Because remember, ladies and gentlemen, when we did our podcast last week, we were four four days into the thing, which means that she jumped from fifth to second in three days. Yeah, that was crazy. So, so that means that a lot of people voted for Veronica and not a lot of people voted for Camilla and Erica and Azura in those three days. Right. And well, keep so. in mind, too, Erica might have actually won if she didn't get she got a new costume 
right when those results came out. So true. people who were voting for her probably were like, ah, we've already got new Erica. Like, I don't, we don't need another That's one. That's true. That's true. And then, and of course, Kamiya, you know, she's been in like two or three of the... Yeah, she's been, it would be Camilla Emblem. You know, four different Camillas uh, yeah. if they if they put her in. So there's definitely a little Camilla fatigue. But you also see the mil- the militant fan- fans out there. And I am kind of a militant fan who were, like, bashing Camilla, like, all the time, and they're so happy that she lost. Um, I, I do think that all the people bashing her for being a fan service character have influenced the discussion. Like, it's it's been a, become a thing where people are kind of... who If you would have definitely voted for Camilla before, you're kind of thinking, eh, maybe not, after, like, all the fans are like, okay, come on, don't vote for Camilla just because of the way she's drawn. It, it's definitely a curious thing, and... Uh... And of course, Veronica will be a first because, you know, she's the antagonist, so we honestly haven't been able to play as her. So I'm really curious how they're going to work her into this because they can't just straight up say that Veronica's on our side. I mean, I guess yeah. they could, they could story wise, given how there's a conflict between her and Searcher right now, but I, I don't know. It, I think they're going to have to do something special, but we'll just have to see. Because remember, when we did the last Choose Your Legends event, we didn't get them until six months later. So, right, yeah. I, so. I, I am curious as to when that'll... I think it's got to be sooner this time, right? Do you get that? Do you feel that way? I have no idea. I, I, I refuse to try and predict these people. Because so. <laughs> we all know how that's gone. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, oh wow, Look, we got a new uh, Sacred Stones banner. Oh, they gave Erica Leon's tome. Hmm. <laughs> yeah so yeah well uh, i'm happy i'm happy that hector and Ephraim won because those guys are two of my favorite lords period you know outside the one true lord ike uh yeah yeah oh, i was and glad that, that and that, that marth guy whoever he is uh, <laughs> <laughs> you jerk <laughs> it's like jerk no. uh but no, I'm, I'm happy for them uh again celica again that just proves how big an impact echoes had on people that yeah that she beat everyone you and know, Alm fan. was fourth. I mean, it's it's surprising. And, and it is Alm was fourth. Yeah. I thought Alm was clearly like the better character compared, it, like from Shadows of Valentia. I liked Celica, but I really thought Alm was obviously the better character. So I'm surprised that Celica actually won. She doubled Alm's votes. Like I, I, wow. I have a hard time believing she's that much more popular than he is. But maybe she has like a much more dedicated fanhood. Maybe, maybe. I just think they're better together. Yeah, yeah. You're definitely yeah. right about that. Uh, anyway, moving on, we got a Faye channel, because Faye celebrated her birthday, uh, and of course, to- today, at the time you're listening to this, which is Friday, we are celebrating the one-year anniversary of Fire Emblem Heroes, and boy, did they break some stuff out. They did. So, if you haven't logged in already today, at the, ti- at the time you're listening to this, 50 orbs are awaiting you, dear Fire Emblem Heroes fans, so go freaking get Wait, them. Wait, the 50 orbs are there right now? Yeah, they're right now. I signed in and I didn't get my 50 orbs. I said today at the time you're listening to this. Oh, today at the time you're listening to this, it all makes sense. Oh, it all makes sense. Will, where are you? You would <laughs> listen to me. Uh, no, uh, on Friday. Friday uh, yeah, 50, no, see, the... you're, you're smart. You're talking to the people in the present where I am existing in the past. Actually, I was talking to the... Never mind, I'm not getting into this time travel thing. Uh, timey, why me, and all that stuff. Uh... <laughs> I appreciate all you Doctor Who fans out there. Uh, no, so on Friday, you're getting 50 orbs, plus daily quests are coming, which will give you another 50 orbs. Uh, add to that, there's a special uh, legendary banner going on right now featuring Vanguard Ike from yeah. uh, Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn, who looks absolutely boss, and I will get you no matter how many orbs it takes. Uh, and then, uh, I, <laughs> I'm, I haven't gotten him yet. I'm at a 9 appearance rate. Yeah, I'm at, I'm at like 9.5 right now, and I'm wait. Once I get the 50 orbs, it's just gonna be I'm gonna dump them all. I'm getting going for the reds, and then watch as I get like Sanaki. Yeah, know? yeah. I, could, I, I got just a feel that's how my day's gonna go tomorrow. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah. So there's that, and then there's gonna be uh, so I can say or I said the uh, Tempest Trials is going on right now. There's gonna be a rhythm mode coming. Uh, I believe I believe on Friday. Uh, so that's gonna be interesting, and like. They haven't told us what we're actually going to get for clearing all these levels. So that's... I think that the rhythm mode was February eighth. Okay, uh, right. Let me double okay. check that. Yeah, go ahead. yeah. You wrote the art. You wrote the article, Tyler. I did write the article. That's yeah. why. I, that's why I jumped in. <laughs> yeah. So, sure. but there's a new theatrical mode. There's going to be new uh, dev maps. 
Uh, basically, like just about anything you could put into the game, you can put into the game. And then, uh, we, Tyler kind of teased this earlier, uh, there is a new Hero Rises event. Uh, Tyler, look up the date for that one as well. Uh, yes. Basically, we, the people, get to vote on who is the best Fire Emblem character currently in the title. So, like, for example, if you think Lynn is uh, the best, or Brave Lynn is the best, you can vote for her. Or if you think that Alm is the best and clearly superior to Selica, uh, you can vote for him. Or if you like Reinhardt or Laszlo, which you'd be fooled do but whatever uh <laughs> or you know or any basically any character that's currently in the game right now you can vote for and the winner of that poll will be distributed to the entire fan base as a five star hero and you can start by the time you're listening to this the voting is open it, it okay, starts voting, actually it is on friday okay yeah february 1st which is the day we're recording it at, oh at, okay. in a half hour we'll be able to vote oh that's better uh but yeah so that's 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 pretty exciting and a lot of potential, though I do worry because as this Choose Your Legends event showed, you can't really trust people. <laughs> no, you can't. Because <laughs> it's like, 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 let's just let's just shoot straight here. If we take the first Choose Your Legends event, combine it with the second, and then gauge, you could basically guess who's gonna get voted. It's either gonna be Ike, Lynn, Lynn. Uh, Roy, maybe. Uh, who was the other female? Uh, yeah. Oh, Lucina. Yes, yeah, or Lucina's tough. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So. It's Roy's like it's interesting because you're mixing the people who want to get a great character with the people who are dedicated to a character yeah. to the people who don't really know what they're doing because they're new to the game. So, so like I'm going to vote for Vanguard Ike because you know he's Vanguard Ike. True. Uh, but it might be more prudent for me to vote for like I don't know uh, uh, Bride Sita because I don't have her. <laughs> so, you'll so, lose. Yeah, yeah, you'll probably lose. But the seasonal units are all in the batch as well, so they might actually do surprisingly well because there's no guarantee when they'll be available again. Yeah. Um, so you could vote for any character, but it'll be odd to see because again, it's a lot of different forces at at bay here or a, 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 acting here. So I wonder which one will overcome the people who really want to get the best character the people who love their character or the people who were like i want to get a unit that's rare it's it's gonna be curious because there's gonna be so many lines of thought on this because there'll be the people who just say like ike is the best character well which ike do you vote for do you vote for base ike brave ike or vanguard ike right it, right again yeah that's a great point because yeah. all those votes get split up between the, di the different branches of like the character so like camilla then, you want to vote for camilla you could vote for spring camilla or regular camilla or you could vote for new year's, uh, new year's camilla like and then and then ironically if you want to vote for marth there's only one marth this time <laughs> yeah, it's not right but, wait a minute no that is right because that means you, there's there's no chance that marth gets split up it's just one marth i know that's true but i have a marth for at five star true Plus ten verge, so I can't. I can't use an extra. I can't there you go. See that? That's why I'm doing going desperately to try and get Vanguard Ike because I don't trust the fan base to vote for him. Like I, Will said, like oh, we gotta vote for Vanguard Ike. So we all get him for free. I don't think he'll get there. I mean, he could. It's, yeah. it's Ike, so you know he's got the fan base. I mean, if I recall correctly, in the first Choose Your Legends event, Radiant Dawn Ike was in the top ten as well. He was. He was. So, he got fifth. <laughs> So, so there you go. So it's like, the, what, what what are you gonna do? Uh, but yeah, but I'm very happy we're talking about this. We talked about this for weeks. Like, what are they gonna do for the anniversary? They they knocked it out of the park. I mean, 50 orbs. We were asking for 20. Yeah, the orbs was really generous. Um, the the Vanguard Ike is really cool. Um, there the, a lot of free maps are coming up. So and the, they're bringing back all the old Grand Hero battles starting oh, yeah, February eighth. Which is really useful. Plus, I think Xander's getting an Infernal mode, which is yep. awesome. Yeah, and then uh, uh, I just remember there's a Hero Fest coming, and it, it features Brave Ike, Brave Lynn, uh, Nephany. Nephany's and... an odd one, but yeah. No, well, Nephany and Sigurd. Yeah, Sigurd, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's just like, I guess they're they're very popular characters, so I, I'm going to obviously go for Brave Lynn, but yeah. Yeah, so that's it's good that they're 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 showing out. I'm a little disappointed that we didn't get more new game modes though. Uh, I don't like the rhythm thing. Um, oh, you just, don't. Crom Show's going nuts over it. I don't I... understand that. I just it's not that's literally that's 
a rhythm game. Fire Emblem is a, str- a strategy game. <laughs> like it's a strategy RPG, not a rhythm game. I don't yeah. understand why. Like, I, I, if I liked the rhythm game, I would get a rhythm game app, not a Fire Emblem app. I, I don't understand that. They're just trying to change things up. I, yeah, I, 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 I it's limited that. time. It's not like a full time mode. It's just a limited time, and it may never show up again. So we'll, we'll I, see how it goes. I hope it doesn't. But I wish that Shut they gave up. us more ways to use our. <laughs> I wish that they gave us more ways to use our units. Like I have a swath of five stars that are forty, and I just haven't used them because they're not as good as some of the other ones that I have. And I wish that there was another way that I could put all these characters to use, um, rather than only like the new strong ones that come out. I was a little disappointed they didn't they didn't do more game modes. But in terms of free stuff, we're getting a lot of free stuff. Yeah, it's it's great. And I can't wait to get all the orbs tomorrow so I can just summon, hopefully get Ike and then save it up because I want to get Brave Lynn one way or the other. So we'll see how it goes. All right, moving on to Switch news. Dear gosh, so much Switch news. So Nintendo uh, officially revealed their end of the year sales report which is honestly something that we have unknowingly been waiting for for a long time uh because it's now february which is freaking sad uh <laughs> yeah so here's the deal the switch from march 3rd to december 31st sold what 14 million and 14 million 860 thousand units which <sighs> which is one point Three more than the Wii U sold in its entire lifetime. <laughs> How crazy is that? That is crazy. <laughs> uh, it's just, I mean, what do you say? I mean, what can you say? Yeah. It's, like, it's... seriously. Uh, <laughs> it did it in 10 months. <laughs> yeah. Well, the more amazing, I mean, the, the Switch sales are obviously, I mean, it's on in Europe and in North America, it's on better pace than the Wii, barely behind the Wii in Japan. Uh, and obviously the Wii was like the biggest thing ever. Yeah. Um, and and uh, it's funny because I remember a couple of episodes back when we were doing Black Friday and I had no idea how many consoles got sold on Black Friday. I said 20 million and that was way too much. But only two months later and they're kind of getting close. Like oh. it's – Okay, it's, context. It's, context december was a massive month for them we well, reported yeah yeah they, exactly. they, they sold 1.5 million in the u.s alone and so and, and according to the report i think the last three months they've sold like 7.5 million switches yeah yeah no i'm not trying to justify my guess was completely horrible but um the the fact that they're they've sold that much since then, which really wasn't that long ago. I mean, if they do, and there's not a lot of big games coming out in January or February, so I assume that the sales will slightly maybe tick down a little bit. Uh, but it released last March. I mean, they could conceivably get to 18 million before, or like in the year. Yeah, since it, which is just remember they said they wanted to get five. Five million was the goal. <laughs> they're looking yeah. at 18. Yeah. like it's wild. It's just it just goes to show that this is a truly transcendent console, and part of the reason for that is its software, which Nintendo also decided to reveal uh, the top selling title sales for the for their games on the Switch. Number one was One Two Switch. I'm kidding, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it was on the list though. Uh, number one was Super Mario Odyssey. Now, I wonder, before I tell you the number, I do want to recall to you that. Odyssey released on October 29th. So by the time this report, you know, cut off on December 31st, it was two months and two days, right? It sold 9 million units in two months and two days. Yeah, that crushed uh, a ton of other huge, like, multi-platform. Star Wars Battlefront got squashed by it. Uh, I'm trying to remember the other ones. There was a lot of games. There's a lot. The the only games it lost to, if I remember the list correctly, were Call of Duty World War II and Destiny 2. Yeah. So that that's pretty freaking epic for two months and two days. Uh, moving down the list, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe port made 7.33 million since April. Uh, Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild was in third with 6.7 million, which is you know still pretty good. Uh, Splatoon 2 was 4.91 million, uh, which uh, great you know great for a sequel. Uh, One two Switch 1.88 million. Tyler's greatest game of all time, Arms, <laughs> 1.61 million. Which I want to talk about that for a second, because remember, it made a million within like the first two weeks of its release. Yes. But it's clearly done jack since then. 
it slowed down a ton. I mean, it's kind of expected. The word of mouth on it wasn't great. Like, like it wasn't bad. Nobody really said, oh, this game stinks. But unlike Breath of the Wild, where it was like a, you know, it was a cultural event, yeah. ARMS never came close to that. And Splatoon d- did come close to that. Like, Splatoon 2, when it launched, was a huge deal. Yeah. Uh, and you would, you know, you'd see everything on Twitter. People would be constantly talking about it. Uh, and you don't see that. You never, you didn't see that as much for ARMS. I agree. It's still and, impressive that it's still no, that yeah, again, much one, for a new one IP. One million that's... for a new IP. Yeah, like you said, one million for a new IP is huge. So... That, and again, if ARMS 2 comes out, they know what to build upon for that. And then, our personal favorite, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 has officially sold 1.06 million units. So, yeah. for all you people who said, oh, VG Charts is wrong, it's probably not selling that well. Clearly, you were wrong! Because <laughs> it sold that million! You're gosh dang right! <laughs> Yep, yeah, so that was that was amazing too because that came out December 1st and it's an yes. RPG and it's a, yes. it's pretty niche. So it's, it's, a, it's a, a Japanese RPG that? even. So Yeah, yeah, so Soft, a millionaire. And, you know, the third game in a kind of a niche franchise that, that started out as, as a cult hit then X released on the Wii U so you know that's kind of hard to gauge success and this one just blew it out of the water. So uh and everyone's saying, "Hey, are we going to get Xenoblade Chronicles 3?" I hope so. So, but all of this just, I mean, 15 million basically. I mean, let's be honest here. Now that it's the end of January, you know they're at 15 million. You know, yeah. there's 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 no way they haven't sold. You know, what was it like a one million? Uh, you know, whatever. Oh, they're point one four hundred and four hundred forty thousand units in January. Something tells me they sold that. Something yeah. tells me. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I just. It's just crazy, and I just here's another here's another fascinating number. Okay, the Wii U, okay, in its lifetime, five years, uh, software wise, sold 101 million units and change, right? Switch, 10 months, 52 million and change. So in 10 months, it's already sold half of the software that the Wii U sold. Yeah, so that means, and and that's not digital count. I don't, I don't think no, that's counting this is, digital. It, no, this is physical digital bundle. All oh. all of it all of it is counted in here. Okay, okay. Well, that that ch- changes my mind then. I was going to say, I mean, that would be... Because that's about four games per Switch. Uh, a little less, like like maybe three. Maybe closer to three. Yeah, three no, and a half yeah. games per uh, Switch. Yeah, three and a half. Because 14 times three is 42. Yeah, so. yeah. So it's probably like three and a half. Which is... I mean, that's that's pretty good. I think I'm almost surprised that there's not more people like downloading a ton of different indie games on their Switches. Um, but still, it's going to... It'll pass... Probably in all likelihood. Well, we know pass. there are because of like remember the GDC report last year. No, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's true that the indies are doing super well on Switch. Oh, yeah. I mean, every single one of them is is or not every single one of them, but most of them are these huge success stories that are sh- like shock the developers. But I'm surprised that the attack like that it's only 3.5 games per console still. That it it seems odd to me, but obviously it's not affecting you know the incredible yeah. success that the Switch is. It's just everybody. Is getting this? They're getting Mario, and they're getting Breath of the Wild, and then they're getting Splatoon and something else. <laughs> like, yeah. so uh, it's it's definitely it's it's definitely uh, uh, crazy though that it's going to probably pass the Wii U and software next year. Like, I, I'd be very surprised. It would honestly just de- it does depend on the games, but yeah. it also depends on how many people buy the console. And so, because if they buy the console now, they've got this backlog of games that they have to get. So, right. It's it's gonna it's gonna be a fun thing to watch, which is good because there's been some you know interesting news about 2018 for the Switch. Uh, let's start off with Tyler's first round draft pick, Nintendo Switch Online. Yes. So the Nintendo Switch Online system will be coming out in September. Now, um, I don't know. Did they they didn't really say too much more than that. No, uh, literally, that's literally what we were told. <laughs> yeah, it's coming out in September. So until then, we'll get to enjoy our free stuff. Um, it, any second now they're going to come out and, and and outline what's in it. Uh, maybe they'll save it. I don't. I, I hope they don't save it for E3. That's not like a fun thing to talk about. And I'd like their E3s to be more fun. I agree. But uh, we should be hearing something about it soon. You would think. I'd be very surprised if they didn't do like a Nintendo Direct special on it. Yeah, yeah, like, you're probably just, right. Maybe even just a mini, just ten minutes. What's the Switch Online? Did does it did it maintain the cost of lot from last year of twenty bucks for the whole year because I, I really want that, um, you know break it down 
What are we getting? Why is it special? What are the achievements and trophies called? Dang it, Nintendo, we want that. Uh, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. If they do a mini or direct on that, that'd be a really good idea because that way you know what you're going to get going in. And hopefully they do a big direct in February. I think that we should be getting like a Kirby, good. Yoshi, Fire Emblem, some, you know, big, big stuff uh, yeah. in the next month or so. Um, and if they if they announce the, the online stuff there, that'd be all right. But we, we have to hear something about it soon. It's good I to agree. know that it's coming out this year, though. Um, yeah, because and... there was that rumor about 2019. <laughs> Right, right. That was terrifying. Well, to uh, you. And fortunately, <laughs> well, fortunately, uh, you had to. Ex- well, I-, I at least am suspecting that they're going to release it with another big game, uh, a big online game. So we'll uh, we'll we'll be be clued into what that could be, or if they'll even do that at all. But I don't see them rolling this out and not having a big game to go with it. Well, my, my only caution would be that. Uh, uh, if they did do that and the service failed for whatever reason, that would hurt the game. True. So what True. they might do is they might have a release soon after, like say two weeks, and then those two weeks, which you know we'll be playing, uh, you know, Splatoon and Arms and whatever other games we have that with online play, we'll use those as the two test weeks, and then when the big game comes out, we'll know they'll have hopefully a rooted out any problems that the that the service may have brought on them. So, yeah, Cuz we true. all remember the point. Splatoon 2 app. Yeah, <laughs> classic. Uh, you know that they mentioned that is like, "Oh, it was first unveiled in the Splatoon 2 release last year." I'm like, "Yeah." It sucked. <laughs> yeah, nobody so. nobody I don't think anybody in the face of the earth uses that, but and if they do may God have mercy on their souls. Uh so another big thing that's that's coming out this year. This is one of the big third party titles is Project Octopath Traveler working title uh so last year uh as we document on this podcast there was a demo that came out and at the end of this demo it showed two characters their store part of their stories the gameplay the combat such and such uh they had a survey that detailed what we the people felt would be better for the game going forward well square enix released a video detailing the what's called the results of that survey and they said that the not only did the demo have one million downloads which is awesome uh but forty three thousand people uh did the survey i just want to stop right there how did we go from one million to forty three thousand you know? <laughs> well i was one of the people who didn't do the survey and i wanted to do the survey i just still haven't finished primrose's story so i haven't gotten around to it Ugh, lame i happily did the survey thank you you're welcome uh so, but still, but 43,000 people completed the survey, and then Square Enix listened to that, and they are adjusting the game appropriately. Uh, let me just look at my article. Uh, some of the things that are being approved are, uh, let's see, uh, how to move the characters, fast travel points, a better save system. You will be able to skip events, which I remember Will talking about yes, in our that podcast. Was uh, some updates to the battle system, and more. Uh, so... It, we have an article on on the website. Just look up Project Autopath, and definitely watch the video. It's like I think it's like eight minutes long or something like that. Uh, Five oh four. There we go. Uh, it's really good. It shows that, that the the team behind the game working on it. And this is this is a project that all three of us here at NEP are excited about. Um, so we, we, we though we don't know a release date, knowing that they're improving it based on our suggestions, that's really really cool. Yeah, yeah, it, I watched that, that whole video. It definitely, there was something huge in there. No. Nothing, like, groundbreaking, but definitely good minor tweaks. I thought that the character movement speed was weird. Um, that was one of the things that stood out to me, that you, I felt like you kind of moved slowly. Um, but they said in the video that, uh, so, like, your new base speed is going to be your your sprint, so you could press B or whatever to sprint in the demo, and that's going to be your new standard running speed. Um but if you hold B, you'll go even faster, but it also like multiplies the encounter rate. So it seems like you encounter more enemies if you're doing that sprint, which defeats the purpose of doing that sprint. Oh, hold on, hold on. It's, it's no different than Pokemon. Think about it. Like, you walk through the grass, you have a certain rate speed, but if you run through the grass, you more than likely encounter Pokemon a lot faster. Yeah, I, 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 I know that, but I don't think, and I think it's wrong in Pokemon, too. I don't think it Ugh. makes sense... Like why? Like the point of a sprint is to run faster, not to 
encounter enemies and slow down. I thought that was a weird thing to tweak in if that you're, way. If you're walking, you create a certain amount of noise. If you're running, you make a lot more noise and draw things to you. No, I, I hear you. I hear you from like that immersive perspective. Ugh. But if you see what I'm saying, like no, I if, don't see what you're saying. You are a fool, Tyler. Fool. <laughs> if you're trying to run, like if you're sprinting, you're sprinting. If you're the player, you're sprinting because you want to get to your destination faster. So th- there's no reason to have that higher sprinting speed if you're just going to be fighting more enemies. Like they should just let you do your standards, or they should do what they did in Bravely Default and let you change the encounter rate by going into the menu. You can turn off enemy encounters in that game and just go to where you want to go. And I think that would be the better fix for the speed. Because then you could sprint and get there to where you want to go fast, or you could jack up the encounter rate and then run into a bunch of enemies. I think that the speed and encounter rate should not be linked. We're just going to have to agree to disagree to agree that you're wrong. Moving on. (laughs) Uh, A surprising bit of news came out of Capcom. Uh, they they did their own little financial report, and they revealed some interesting things about the Switch games that, that they were released uh, last year. One of them was that Resident Evil Revelations sold 250,000 units on the Switch, which actually isn't too bad for a port. Uh, and then uh, Ultra Street Fighter 2, the final challengers, apparently blew away Capcom's expectations. Uh, did we have a, a big num- a number on that, Tyler? They didn't actually. Okay, uh, we knew it was over five hundred thousand when we were talked about it a couple months ago. So, give or take, I probably say it was close to a million, which is hilarious because that's exactly what Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite sold on multiple consoles worldwide. They only sold one million total. Yeah, that. <laughs> yeah, it, it's insane that the, the, a game that was overpriced really, and for most reviews, like just kind of like average an average game yeah. did that well i mean it's it definitely was the it was the first fighting game on switch so that helped um it, it was wasn't it yeah yeah <laughs> um but it just it, it scratched an itch i wish they gave us the exact numbers and showed us which regions it did the best and i don't know anybody who's played it besides clinton i think clinton yeah so say, we review. both know someone <laughs> yeah <laughs> but uh outside of somebody who wrote it for review purposes i've never seen people playing it um but it was on my radar. I just didn't have the money to get it. Like, there was other things I wanted more. Yeah, I had no, I had no interest. Honestly, not that I'm not a Street Fighter fan. I just didn't really want a 25 year old port. But someone did, and so a lot of people it, did. Yeah. yeah, a lot of people did, and a lot of people wanted it more than a uh, modern interpretation of a classic franchise, which they totally botched via the graphics and the story and yada yada yada. Where's my X Men? Where's my X Men? Uh, so that, what this makes me ask the question though is that will this and I know we talked about this earlier this year, last year, but uh, will this really enforce Capcom to come to Switch? Because we know like they are bringing some games, like the Phoenix Wright games, and there's Mega gonna be a, a, a court, a court, Mega Man. But will this bring more? Because they know now that there is a Street Fighter group on the Switch, and they're ready to play it. And it, they proved it by playing a 25 year old port with only slight upgrades. So. I'm, I'm yeah, not saying... I have to hope yeah. so. I mean, they they definitely their they their reports were up and down, and the switch is one of their biggest high points. So I would imagine that they're going to look at those figures and go, "Yeah, like let's let's bring it." I mean, I, I'm confident that Mega Man will sell better on Switch than every other platform combined, probably. I mean, probably. Uh, it's it's Mega Man kind of feels like a Nintendo IP almost. It does. Um, but yeah, yeah. So I mean, you'd have to imagine that it would. Well, we'll we'll just have to see. Uh, okay, Tyler. I'll, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you talk about your thing. Don't go overboard. <laughs> ah, yes. So, uh, the Sega on uh, March 16th will be uh, at South uh, Southwest will be unveiling the next chapter in the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise. So they said, interestingly, they said on the on the heels of the success of Sonic Mania, of the outstanding success of Sonic Mania and Sonic Forces. <laughs> Sonic Forces was not outstandingly successful. <laughs> um, but uh, I'm glad that it must have been successful enough. They're going to reveal the next step in the Sonic franchise. So I'm hoping that it's Sonic Mania 2. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not Sonic Forces 2. Yeah. Uh, but 
definitely exciting and definitely I mean, yeah, Sonic Forces sold way better on Switch than every other platform and I, I again Sonic Mania I think was the same story. Yeah. So I I am expecting this to come to Nintendo's platform in some regard assuming it's a game. Like it would stink if it was like here's a- another Sonic Boom game coming to mobile we devices. We we don't we don't <laughs> speak of that. We don't speak of that. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't put it past Sega, though. You, you never oh, know. No, you don't put anything. Remember, Mania was intentionally made by Sega. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, Mania was, was made by the fans, which was yep. and then know, the best Sonic game in years. Yep. How ironic that the fans make a better Sonic game than the Sonic team. I saw wow. a, a video today of a fan uh, a Sonic Forces mod that like made the game way better. It's like, <laughs> the fans can do this. Why can't you, Sonic team, you... Think. I know, I know. It's 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 kind of the same logic that I have with keep that keep saying to Nintendo, why don't you hire us? Because we clearly know what we're talking about with Nintendo stuff, and we have ideas. Okay, I have been praised for my idea creation in the past, and not just by myself and my split personalities, but <laughs> uh, by other people who I who have gr- I have great respect for. So I'm just saying, if you need new story guys, I'm here. Tyler, I'm sure can help. Hey. Get, give Tyler the Sonic team, and they can make a Sonic exclusive title yeah. for the Switch. I, I would make an unbelievable Sonic story. I understand Sonic canon there better than anybody in the universe. There you go. There you go. Ooh, hi, 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 Mark. If you think you can challenge Tyler and Sonic <laughs> Core, please Come let on. us know. Try, try me. As long as we're talking games. We're talking about games. We're not talking about Sonic comics. We're talking about games. Okay, what is Sonic's middle name? Ugh. Darn it. <laughs> 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 okay. Oh, I got it. I got it. What is is Sonic's fastest recorded speed. No, oh, okay, okay, nice. I gotta say this right, I gotta say this right. Fastest recorded speed, no Chaos Emeralds, or other oh, uh, stimulants. That's a, that's a good question. I remember they talking about this in Death Battle. That's yes, that's exactly from. what I was thinking about. <laughs> a really fast is my, is my answer. <sighs> so sad, it's uh, 24,000 miles per hour. How does so. Todd, Todd knows everything about Sonic. <laughs> I did one up. Oh, yeah, that's a, uh, see, I, I have beaten the guy who loves Sonic more than life <laughs> itself. You, you are welcome. <laughs> All right. Uh, but seriously, like, I hope, you know, I hope that you know Sonic gets his due. Uh, again, he deserves a good game actually made by Sonic Team. Uh, I just hope they <laughs> listen because okay, Sonic Forces had the potential. It did. They, it had they, so much potential. They didn't. They didn't live up to it, and that's that's the sad truth. So, well, I, I don't know. I, for one, am thinking that Sonic is going to pick up a win against Mario in another regard because both characters officially have movies coming out. Hello. Um, and I just so the Mario movie is officially being made. Do you remember the studio that it's being made? Um, Im- Illumination. Im- Illumination. Um, they the team that made Minions and all that. Okay, just I want to stop really quick. Uh, the official uh, fastest speed is twenty six thousand eight hundred and forty four miles per hour, or something like that. And that you were close enough to be yeah. honest. I was, I was, I was close. Yeah, yeah, I didn't even venture ah! a guess. I went with really fast, which was accurate. It was, it was yeah. not wrong. <laughs> uh, the uh, Sonic, so the, the Sonic movie, the Mario movie made by the team that made Minions, uh, is official. It's a real thing, and it's coming. Uh, and I just think this is a disaster. But I don't know about you. What do you think, Todd? Uh, it's it's gonna be interesting. Okay, I actually have to correct myself. I just rewatched the video. Uh, in light speed, just like Sonic. Okay, Sonic's fastest recorded speed is six thousand seven hundred and eleven miles per hour. I was look. I was referring to Metal Sonic, who oh, could yeah, go four Metal, times yeah, yeah. as fast as Sonic. He can. He can. Yeah. People forget that. So yeah, but yeah, he's six thousand one hundred and eleven. Sorry, six thousand seven hundred eleven miles per hour, give or take. So, I just think of the game theory where they had Mario and Sonic racing, and, yeah. and they said Mario was faster in the first Mario and the first Sonic, and it just drives <laughs> me so crazy. That is fake news. No, the 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 best. I think when Death Battle did Mario versus Sonic, I think the best thing that they did was when they showed Mar- Mario growing because of the Mega Shroom, and he was keeping up with Sonic not because he was faster, but because his strides were huge. Right. So that was funny. Okay, going back to the movies though. Okay, I think this is a good thing. Here's why. Wreck It Ralph proved that a video game cartoon can work. Now, yes, those were more or less original characters with, with Ralph and. Hold on, though. Who uh, was the best character in Wreck It Ralph? Oh, Zangief. No, no, no. It was Sonic. Sonic was the best character in Wreck It Ralph. He was in there for all of three seconds. <laughs> it up, was Tyler. awesome, though. Shut up. Okay. Uh, and, and I'm sorry, Zangief. Sorry, Sonic cannot break <laughs> man's uh, head with his thigh. 
Okay. <laughs> Yeah, that was a great movie. Wreck It Ralph was fantastic. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Like, and Wreck It Ralph proved that this can work in an animation setting, and it and that's and there's a sequel coming out, which apparently is going to have Mario in it, uh, if, in one way or another. So, you know, that's that's going to happen. But in an animation setting, there's a lot more freedom, and there's a lot more what's what um versatility that they can go in in the story for example they don't have to make mario talk they really don't as long as they are expressive enough with bowser with peach and everything they honestly don't have to have mario talk not unlike what we had with mario and rabbit's kingdom battle that was yeah. kind of a movie you know with all the cutscenes and all that so well that's uh, true yeah so like everyone when everyone thinks of you know like i heard a uh, ironically the one of the creators of death battle talking about uh this he goes oh man you're giving illumination mario the 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 studio that uses the minimal amount of effort ever to make character models i'm like those were supposed to look like that they also made a secret life of pets which became an oscar winning film because of all the you know stories and dogs and cats they did you know those were those were really good but point is here and mario is established you don't have yeah. to alter the models all you have to do is bring the models upgrade them a little bit to match the lighting of your film and then have at it so i just so here's what, what it gets me with it right you're bringing up a good point with kingdom battle like that would be that would be an angle for sure um i mean i don't think kingdom battle story was particularly like compelling but it, it was entertaining enough um but mario is like he's awesome and he's perfect for for to be the mascot of gaming because he he's just happiness you know like he but he's a one note guy like mario's not a sad boy ever he's not angry hardly ever uh he just he hits all the story notes and like if you look at like the best mario stories which are definitely the paper mario games yes. uh those games are carried by mario's sidekicks like so maybe they could do something like that, but then it's really not as much of a Mario movie as it is a like a, a Nintendo thing, which is probably the right direction to go. Honestly, like if they were to do something like a Paper Mario type thing, that would be that would be better. But as much as I love Charles Martinet, and you know he's going to be in there, like Mario can't Mario can't talk. Like if if his voice is great for when he goes wahoo and all that, Charles Martinet Mexico. nails it. Yeah, it's great. But imagine two hours of that. Yeah. I, too much. It's too much. Yeah, that's what I was saying. You don't have to have him talk, you know? Like, I was, like, when I was thinking about how I would write Wreck It Ralph 2, I wanted to have Link in there, you know? And I was going to put a, a funny little joke to where um, Link won't talk when he's in a game world because that's his shtick. But then once they go into like the, the overworld, like right at the end of the movie, he starts. <laughs> that would be funny. He, he start he start yapping like nobody's Dude, that's business. That's a great idea. <laughs> and he goes like, wait, and like, wait, wait, Link, you talk? It's like, yeah, dude, of course I talk. Like, why didn't you talk during your whole journey? Because I'm in the game world. I'm not supposed to talk in there, you know. <laughs> and so you can totally make this work without having him talk outside the let's go and all that stuff because that's okay. Peach can talk as long as you give her the right voice and bowser can talk you know because he can uh yeah, even in, in some Odyssey, games he talked so yeah but he, he he kind of talks like uh uh what, what type of thing he, he's like blah, 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 word that you recognize yeah. <laughs> yeah. so it, it's all about it's all about a getting the right voice because again look at wreck it ralph okay m bison and Zangief and all that, all these cl Eggman and all these classic characters where they're like, they had these voices and it made them epic because of how they were delivered. So as long as they do it the right way with Mario, I have no doubt this could work. Okay. So we I just, hope you you're right. I gotta think it's have, gonna be a disaster. You gotta have faith. And then if it burns, we can all, we'll all go stalk Nintendo together. Okay. 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 Uh, staying with Mario news. Okay, seriously, like, we thought that we had been through all, all the big news. Okay, we had had Faye Channel, we had the financial report. What was left? Well, they had an investors meeting, too. And right after they dropped the line about Nintendo Switch Online, they revealed their next, um, one of their next mobile titles, which is going to be a Mario Kart Tour. Again, which we called in the Futuristic Podcast uh, a couple episodes back. Oh, that's right, we did call that, didn't we? We did. We okay. did. We said it, was, it wasn't in our next, poll. And we were like, it's probably going to be F Zero or Mario Kart. That oh, that's was... right. We, <laughs> we did say that, didn't we? 
Okay. Yep. But yeah, so Mario Kart Tour, which honestly, honestly, is one of the best properties to fit a mobile platform, you could argue. Because all you need are, you know, either simple touch to controls, simple motion controls, and, you know, on, always online, which a lot of these games are always are. So th there's a lot of potential for this. Now, unfortunately, the release date is literally the next year. <laughs> yeah, 2019. Well, okay, no, no, no. It's the next fiscal year, which is March 2018 to uh, April 2019. So. Oh, really? I thought they said it was coming out in 2019. No, that that was the, it was the, at the latest 2019. Okay. So they said, but they said within the next fiscal year. So, um, now this is interesting because a a, a it's Mario Kart, uh, which we we as we noted earlier did incredibly well on the Switch. Um, another reason it's interesting is that will this affect the next Mario Kart game on the Switch. Because you have to think that they're working on Mario Kart 9 right now. Right, well, you would. And I, I would say no on that. Because if you look at, you know, the other um, mobile apps, like Animal Crossing, Pocket Camp, that when that came out, people were saying, this is probably good for Animal Crossing Switch. Like, it's going to bring up some hype for the franchise. Same thing for Fire Emblem Heroes. Like, we heard that that got announced alongside Fire Emblem Switch, but it, it, they're not mutually exclusive. Um, I, I think that's one of the things about Mario Kart. It, it'll probably be a game that you you pay a flat rate for, like um, Super Mario Run, which is probably better. Um, but I don't see how you could do a half baked like Fire like Fire Emblem Heroes is like the perfect mobile Fire Emblem. Like it's everything you like about the series kind of shrunk down, and it's it's simple and it's perfect for playing it with one hand and all that good stuff. Uh, Animal Crossing is kind of similar, not quite as great. Um, Mario Run pretty much the same way. Mario Kart, how do you how do you water down Mario Kart? Like I'm I not honestly, sure. I also think it's motion controls. You think that's you, how you, do it? you could do motion controls with one hand. That's true. That's true. You could. Uh, yeah, maybe maybe that is how they'll do it. I wonder. Um, there there's a, a ton of different ways that they could approach it. Um, but yeah, I, I hope I hope that it's it's uh, it's good and that it's kind of a almost fully fleshed out Mario Kart game, um, but not so much to the point where you're like, okay, well, we don't need a Mario Kart, you know, nine. Now, the, I, curious, uh, the curious thing here is the title. Yes. Because it's called Mario Kart Tour, as in maybe World Tour, Grand Tour, or what have you. So this makes you wonder about what else we're going to get in the game. And what I'm thinking of is that they might pull a Splatoon and have rotating maps. Uh, maybe like three every week. Yeah, that would. I could see that. That would be interesting. That would now, definitely be interesting. Yeah, and then obviously new updates would add new maps, which would be add to the rotation. And so like every week will be a different week of racing. So you're not getting stagnant. You know, yes, a week is a lot, but let's be honest here. If we could play our favorite track every single day, we would. So, right. I don't know. It's just, it's interesting. And I, I'm very curious about the modes because as Fire Emblem taught, showed us, Fire Emblem Heroes showed us, that game has a lot of modes. And we're about to get another one with that Theatrical Rhythm one uh, that Tyler hates. Uh, I do hate that. You do. I really but hate that. Crom Show loves it. Hi, Crom Show. Uh, we miss you. I respectfully um, disagree with you. <laughs> yeah. He, oh, by the way, Crom Show, Tyler said to me privately that he hates Bacallus. What? what? No, that's not true. I said the opposite. I said I said Crom Show made a good point about Mikalis not being a bad character. That's uh, that, that's. Uh -huh, yeah, sure, Tyler. Anyway, yeah, uh, means... but I, there's a lot. I, I'm curious about: Will they have a battle mode? Will they focus solely on the racing? Um, will they try and do some a new kind of racing mode? I don't know, but. I, I do hope we get new details on this soon, and it isn't just like what we have with Animal Crossing or Mario, where it's just like we know they're coming, we don't know what capacity until like a month before it's released. Because I, I think in this case, detailing it early would really help build the hype, so that when it releases, whenever, uh, like it'll be an instant download for millions. Yeah, but, that's going to be probably the best one. I mean, Mario Kart's always so huge. Oh yeah, um, but it's got yeah, it's got that that. So now, to all demographics. But now the other question is, is that there's some debate about whether this is Nintendo's next mobile game or just the one they're just now announcing that they're making. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be their next one. I really do. Um, they're, they're doing one of the most interesting things that I've, I've noticed. Um, I think it might have been in their uh, uh, financial briefing is that uh, the Fire Emblem Heroes has been 
its player base has been growing. Um, and they said that Mario Run, for the first time, I think, ever, they described it as a success. And they said people are enjoying Animal Crossing Pocket Camp, too. So I kind of suspect that they're just going to keep up with those three games that they have out now and that Mario Kart is going to be the next one. Uh, I don't know. I, I honestly don't. I honestly hope it's not the next one because if it comes out in late, you know, 20 or early 2019, that means we've had a, over a year with no mobile games. And that goes against the report that they said that they're trying to buckle down so they can get two to three games yeah. a year. But that also raises the question, if this isn't, you know, the, the, the next one, what are they working on and why haven't they announced that now? Right, right. Why are we hearing about one that could potentially come out next year versus one that could be coming out in the next six months? It's it's very con- it's very confusing. And while you know Animal Crossing and Fire Emblem Heroes is certainly holding down the fort, they need to keep going with all the momentum's high, especially with everything that's been going on with the Switch. So yeah, totally, I don't know. totally. All right, one last piece of news before we move on. Uh, w- while we noted that the Switch has sold uh, 15 million units, it doesn't mean that's the only console that Nintendo is selling. Because the SNES Mini, uh, or Classic, whatever you want to call it, uh, has officially sold 4 million units. Not bad. I, yeah. And they're restocking them again, too. Yeah. Uh, so so. It, it, highest, it was highest in September. Um, Shocking. Not. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just another uh, uh, component of Nintendo's business that's just booming right now. They're also actually bringing back the NES Classic officially. Um, so that, that's going to be, uh, in stores, I think in April is what I was reading. Um, so hopefully these things will, those, those products will be easier to find for a long time. Cause it was definitely difficult to get your hands on one. Uh, but it, I, I just, I just find it fascinating cause we, we knew that this wouldn't be like, you know, a, a super, super seller, but th- 4 million is nothing to shake a stick at. Uh, no, that doesn't sound right. Well, whatever. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's 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 something that that is something to be praised because you know it, again this is a retro console with a bunch of games, classic games built in. It honestly had less games than the original uh, than, the, than the NES Classic. So, but it proves that the the SNES uh, still holds true to in many uh, gamers' hearts. Uh, and if you were lucky to be one of the four million, congrats to you. We're all still waiting for our copies. Kidding. Uh, I honestly wouldn't. I honestly wouldn't get it, not because I don't want it, but because the Switch has spoiled me, so I don't want to hook up a console to my TV anymore. <laughs> yeah, I, I would probably get one if I had the uh, the money to throw around, um, and maybe maybe one day soon I will, just because I like to collect those things. But I do own most of the games that are on there, um, so it, its appeal is definitely sort of limited to people who own most of those games, especially if you've already download, downloaded those on other virtual consoles. Um, but still, I mean, the 4 million is, is definitely definitely a, a, a impressive number, uh, and it's it's just a, a, a another... It's a matter of time until we get the N64 classic. Agreed. Agreed. Uh, but all in all, it just proves that 2017 was indeed the year of Nintendo, any which way you look at it. So... Literally from the beginning of February on. Yeah. I, actually, I take that back. I say January just because of the Switch reveal event. Which yeah, I agree. literally kicked it all off. So, yeah. All right. Now, so 20, 2017 is long gone. We are officially into February. And there was some interesting news that uh, piqued Tyler and I's interest about what 2018 has to hold for uh, for, for the big end and, and more importantly for the Switch. And so we're going to debate whether a very key franchise has to come out this year. Uh, So ladies and gentlemen, it's time to sell it and smash. Okay, so here's the here's the question, ladies and gentlemen. As of right now, and, and again, all, our vision only really being the new the next few months of Nintendo Switch's roster, there really isn't a killer app. Uh, we know that you know Kirby's coming, which is great. It probably will be a million seller, but it's not it's not a Mar- it's not a Mario Odyssey, it's not a Breath of the Wild, it's not a Splatoon 2. We know Yoshi is coming, 
probably be Million Seller, but it's not, you know, the other big franchises. We know Fire Emblem is coming, which could be that franchise, but we don't know when it's coming out. Um, and then there's Mario Tennis All Stars, which, uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> Dungeon <laughs> Tennis. No, I'm kidding. Uh, but there is a franchise out there that we know will be could be a multi-million seller, and that would be Smash Brothers. Now we're mentioning Smash Brothers not because we just want this game to come out, but because during their investor meeting, Nintendo showed off a report of all the games that are coming, and three titles really stood out. One was Bayonetta labeled to be announced in its release date. The second was Metroid Prime 4, which was labeled to be announced uh, in its release date. And then Pokemon, which is labeled 2018 or later in its release date. So if Metroid's not coming out this year, if Pokemon's not coming out this year, potentially, if uh, Bayonetta's not coming out later this year, if Mario Kart's not coming out later this year, what do we have? What do we got? And Smash Brothers may be the answer, maybe potentially. Uh, Tyler, I know you have a strong viewpoint on this. I'm going to tell you why. I'm <laughs> going to tell you why. Because Todd, you know, he's a hater, and he he doesn't he doesn't think it's possible. And a few whoa, days whoa, whoa. ago, don't, don't put words in my mouth. I am the host of this podcast. I will mute you. <laughs> I Todd did not say I did not say it wasn't possible. So. I will give you my answer, but my answer is not it's not possible. So okay, you, okay, you stop okay. it right there. Okay. Well. Anyway, anyway, I used to think it wasn't possible, but then I stopped and I looked at I looked at the schedule, right? And as I alluded to in our news segment on the online stuff, that comes out in September. There's another prominent game that came out in September not too long ago, and that was Smash Four for 3DS. So I think, and that was back in uh, 2014, right? Now you might be thinking that it's too soon for a new Smash Bros. game because it kind of feels like Smash Four just came out. Kind of. Uh, but I think that that's partially because the build-up to Smash 4 was so huge. Like, that there, at, that, at every Nintendo Direct, you get a new trailer revealing a new character, and it was super hype, and it was dramatic every time. Uh, and it, it, it almost would feel like a disappointment if they didn't do that for Smash 5. Uh, and it feels like we kind of need more time to build that up again. However, if they were to not do that, it's actually been enough time to create a Smash 5. So... Smash 4 development, uh, it's, it ended completely after the DLC came out in 2016, but after the initial release in 2014, let's just say that Mr. Iwata was like, Mr. Sakurai, we're going to get Smash, we need Smash on Switch. Uh, and even though, you know, I know that you're tired of making it, uh, we want this out early in the Switch's life because it's, you know, it's Smash Bros. It's a huge deal. We need that on our console early. Um and, and say he agreed, or say Sakurai said no, and they brought it to somebody else to, to say, hey, you know, we need somebody to work on Smash Bros. They would have had four years to work on that alongside the DLC. That's plenty of time to make a new game. People forget. I mean, I know it's different because the development on GameCube, I'm sure, was easier than developing for Switch or less detailed. Um, but Melee came out two years after uh, Smash 64. And Brawl came out seven years after Melee, but Smash 4 came out only six years after Brawl. So really, we're only two years away from when we should be getting a new Smash Bros. game. Um, if you go according to the schedule, right, uh, the the Smash 4 was announced four years after Brawl was released. So we, it's not it's not impossible. The window is definitely uh, is definitely there. And I think another key point is that online app it should be launched with a big game to justify people buying it. Uh, I mean, whether they, they give you like, you know, an amazing virtual console deal or, or something like that, you know, maybe that would be enough, but I don't see them launching it without a new big game. And I think that that's going to be smash bros. I just think that smash bros is Nintendo's big online game. We've already had a Mario Kart, so that's not going to be another Mario Kart. And then what else could it be? Like, I think that we could be seeing smash five in September. You make valid points. And let me be clear, I do not think it's impossible that Smash Brothers could come out this year. Okay? However, barring it being announced in the next Nintendo Direct, which we are all hoping we get in February. Okay, so let's let's just say, okay, so February, I don't know, what's 14th. Okay, that's a Wednesday. Okay, Valentine's Day. Perfect day for Nintendo Direct. Because we <laughs> love Nintendo. Holla! <laughs> uh, 
Okay, so let's see. So February, so you say September. So let's just say September 14th. Okay, so that's February to March, March to April, April to May, May to June, June to July, July to August, August to September. That's seven months. Okay. Barring that uh, announcement on Valentine's Day, potentially, uh, and you know it coming out in September, potentially, they 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 wouldn't do it any later than that. They need they as much as you made a good point about you know you know they don't need the hype as much. They do need the hype. Because the hype is what Smash Brothers does better than any other game out there. Yeah, the hype Fight. was so great. Fight me, bro. I don't care. Uh, <laughs> come at me, bro. You're right. The, the like I, as I cut you off dramatically, I know what you were about to say. You were about to say like you know the the hype was what made Smash Four, and it, it was, and uh, the hype was what made Brawl. You know, melee not so much because you know that was it was still growing at that point, but the trailers, the 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 the, the leaks, you know, which were only halfway accurate. Uh, all the drama about Captain Falcon. Seriously, Captain Falcon is going to be in the game. Get over it. <laughs> no, seriously, like I, I saw so many people whining. Why I remember him is, that. Where's Captain Falcon? Is he? Is did they cut him? Why would they cut him? I was so triggered when people were like, "What are the Fire Emblem do characters doing in Captain Falcon's reveal trailer?" Like, e- you're the worst. I hate yeah. you, people. <laughs> You are the. If you thought, if you were mad that the Fire Emblem characters were a Falcon's trailer, you are the worst. Okay, <laughs> that was that was horrible. They put Falcon in there so you would shut up. Okay, <laughs> so be quiet. Uh, so calm me down, calm me down. Uh, but they, if they are going to, if they were to do it this year, they have to do it now. They have to reveal it at the next direct. But will they? I don't think they will. Not because it's not possible. Not because you know they 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 couldn't have made it in this amount of time. I just don't think they need to. Now, yes, we I said that in the, in the, my Nintendo draft that the big one of the biggest things they needed to have was a killer app, and Smash Brothers most definitely would be that killer app. But the way that Nintendo okay Nintendo has already admitted that this year is very important for the Wii. I'm oh, sorry, dang it, the Switch. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, 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 too many causes in my head right now. Uh, is very important for the Switch, and yes, it is. And they've admitted that you know they're they're trying to do their best to maintain the momentum that the first that last year had, which we all rightfully admitted was not going to be possible more than likely, uh, just because of timing and franchises, which which we are all okay with. But they still need at least one killer app. Now, Pokemon still could come out this year, as they said, 2018 or later. But still, we don't know anything that's coming out after May, which is when All Stars comes out, when Dark Souls comes out. You know, everything we know basically from February till May, which is fine. Which still leaves June, July, August, September, October, November, December. So there's a lot of time to announce a big killer app like Fire Emblem Switch. Uh, let's see, what else could it be? You know, Retro Studios is still working on something. We we know they're going to be having something. Uh, Project Octopath. That could be a very big game. Again, the demo got a million downloads, so if you know all those million came back, that's a million at a base, plus all the other people who are probably going to be intrigued. Right. They they don't need it per se. And what's more, given Nintendo's history with Smash Brothers, even if they did announce it for February on on that legend on that potential valentine's day direct where nintendo proclaims their love of the fans and they love us so much that they're giving us smash brothers <laughs> i honestly wouldn't believe them when they said it's coming out in september because brawl got delayed yeah true. because smash 4 got delayed and smash 4 came out three months apart from each other between the 3ds and the wii u versions and if there's one thing we know about sakurai outside of that he's a genius that he looks really really young that he's a rock star have you seen that hair oh my gosh <laughs> uh, <laughs> he's a perfectionist he will not release a game unless it's perfect absolutely perfect in his eyes yeah so to me even if they did announce it there could be one little thing that goes wrong, a mode that he realizes isn't perfect enough, and he'll delay the game six months, just like he did with Brawl. On the day they announced Sonic the Hedgehog, they delayed Brawl six months, and yeah. it was horrible. Yeah. But, but, we, but we lived, because we knew that Smash Brothers would be great whenever we got it. Right. So. Well, that's, I think, part of it goes back to my theory that Sakurai might not be making it. I don't really think that he would. I remember the the countless stories of him saying he was kind of 
not that he was done with Smash Bros, but that he wanted to take a break from Smash Bros after Smash Force development yeah, because which is well deserved. <laughs> right, right. I mean, as we highlighted, that was the build up to that was absolutely insane, and I'm sure that he's constantly getting stuff from fans, you know, saying the pressure to make that game what it was, and the fact that it was every bit as great as we had hoped is just incredible. Um, but I, I'm, I'm thinking he might not be making the game. I mean, they very easily could pretty much take Smash 4, refine some, some make, make a few tweaks for it, and, you know, like, have a different team. They had Band, got Bandai Namco uh, play a huge role in developing Smash sure. 4. They could easily do that again. Uh, and, and in that case, I do think that the time frame is there for that game to be built. And you're right. Like, the build-up was a lot of fun. Like, that was... I will never, ever be as excited for a game as I was for Smash 4. Like, those trailers were so hype, and every Nintendo Direct was so hype when you were waiting for Sakurai to appear. You're waiting for the lub dub lub dub shh <laughs> And right. the, uh, the, the reveal of who, who, who was joining the fight next. Yeah, However, I... I would be more happy with them releasing a new game, like, without that fanfare, if they brought Smash 5 to the Switch in uh, in, in 2018, that would be absolutely huge. I do think that Pokemon's going to come out this year. I've been saying that for a long time. I do think that Pokemon's going to come out this year, um, and I think that's a big reason why they expect to hit that number. But I think that they're looking for something. They need something to go along with that online service to justify it, rather than just saying, okay, now you're paying for the stuff that you already had for free. Like, I don't think them giving away another copy of Super Mario Bros. is going to do it. I think that they need to say, this robust online system is awesome now, and here is the best game that we have for online. That's Smash Bros. Enjoy it. Uh, and so, uh, you know, it's, it's, I guess it's, if you were, if you were to hold a gun to my head and make me bet, which do I think it's coming out this year or not, I would say the safer bet is probably no. I don't think it's as crazy as people think. I definitely think it's possible that it comes out this year. It's not crazy. It's just it's all about timing, likelihood, and who's banking it. And you're right. There is a good chance that Sakurai is not making one. I, I remember specifically there was stories about how he was basically injured while making uh, Smash 4, and that was affecting his development, which is part of the reason it took so long, because he he's very hands-on with the development of the yeah. game. Um so it, it is Sakurai making it, you know, and and we we're all going. You were going off the assumption that Wada, Mr. Wada, before he passed, basically said, "Hey, we need, you know, Smash Five on our next console," which we know they were already planning uh, around that time. So you know that that's a big assumption, especially since Sakurai and Mr. Wada were big good friends, and they basically helped make Smash Brothers together. So while I don't doubt that you know he would go and ask. There's also the question of he would have known that Sakurai needed right, a break. Was, right, right, so, true, true. Um, and more of more of it than that, whatever, whenever Smash Brothers is announced, that's going to be like the premier game. Okay, yeah. and the Nintendo will literally plan their year around Smash Brothers because they want nothing to interfere with it. Like just how they did Zelda and Mario, uh, seven months apart. Right. right? Okay, give or take. So, you know, because they, they wanted to make sure that Breath of the Wild did not interfere with Odyssey or vice versa. Uh, which, again, makes you wonder why Fire Emblem Warriors was released for Odyssey, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> why, Nintendo, why? Uh, but t- for them not to have announced it by now, and again, I'll, I'll give it a few weeks grace because of uh, we haven't had a major Nintendo Direct this year. Um, it's it's not impossible. It's just unlikely. Yeah. And I I would not want Smash Brothers rushed. I know you do not want Smash Brothers rushed. I know our fan base does not want Smash Brothers rushed. I why is it so hard to say? Uh, Smash Brothers rush. Smash Brothers rush. No. Yeah, that is hard to say. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we we want it. That that was never a question. We want it as soon as possible. That was never a question. But we also want it as soon as possible in the best condition it can possibly be in. And I do not think that September, barring them working nonstop for the last couple of years to get it done, is that is is that condition. So I'm just I respectfully say that it is not going to come out this year. Nor do I think it needs to come out this year because we still Nintendo maybe Nintendo didn't do did the mini first so that they could build up what the bigger direct is going to be and then blow all of our minds. We don't know. 
They had to no, come out big true. last year because that they announced the Switch event three months ahead of time. They do need a big game this year, though. And, I mean, I again, I do think that Pokemon's coming out this year. That obviously qualifies as a, as a very big game. Uh, but I, I think that just Pokemon and the, I mean, the lab was obviously going to be big. But that would definitely be a long downer period for the, the hardcore fan, uh, barring that, fi- like, maybe, you know, you see Fire Emblems coming out in... I mean, if we haven't seen that yet, that's probably not coming out until the end of the year. I mean, it's it's hard to say. We need to get those release dates for the games that we've heard, like Yoshi uh, and, and, and Fire Emblem and, and whatever else they have. We need to get that calendar filled out to really say for sure if they're missing a slot for one more big game. But if they only have Pokemon, I do feel like that's that's a step back from what they did this year or la- in, la- this year last year in 2017. And I mean, again, it's it's hard to match what they did in 2017, but that would be, I feel, a big step backwards. Uh, and it's not all their faults, but I I just I gotta I gotta imagine that they are trying to keep that momentum rolling, uh, and that they have a plan for how to do it. And I think Smash Bros. would kind of justify would be would be enough to do that. Well, I think we're just gonna have to leave it there because it's. It's honestly not in our hands. It's honestly in Nintendo and HAL Laboratories and potentially Sakurai. So we'll just have to hope that uh find out some information soon one way or the other. In fact, Tyler, let's make that our poll question. Ah, uh, yes. Should Smash Brothers come out this year? Okay, actually revise that. Make that in 2018 so there's no leeway. Like, no, yeah. like oh, fiscal year. No, 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 no. <laughs> in 2018. Also, what was the result of our last poll question? Yes, so the question was, which Fire Emblem couple is your favorite? Ike X Valencia, uh, Lin X Hector, Robin X Starja, or other? And uh, Lin X Hector won by f- uh, 40% to 20% for all the others. Darn, hey, hey, that's saying something, because Ike Valencia was up for a while. Yeah, yeah. It, okay. It, there's a, a, a late push. Kidding. Uh, again, hey, if you like Lin and Hector, that, that's, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's up to you. Sure, why not? Icolintia suit far superior or whatever. Uh, but yeah, so our next poll question: Should Smash Brothers come out in 2018? Yes or no? No, no maybe's, no others. Yes or no? You have, you must pick a side. That's right. Okay. Uh, and with that, we will end this uh episode of the Nintendo Entertainment Podcast. What did you think of all the Epic Switch news we got from the sales of the console, from the sales of the game, to, uh, to the reveals of some of the other games uh the update for project octopath what do you think about the mario movie are you like me and willing to give it a chance because you know you can be good are you like tyler who's panicking and thinking of the super mario live action movie yes that's yes. what i honestly i'm seeing that <laughs> uh what do you think about uh sonic what do you think about nintendo switch online are you excited for mario kart tour tweet at us we have all of our uh, twitter handles on the uh, podcast page so let us know that and let, let's chat. And then hopefully next week we will not be alone. <laughs> just, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Uh, it won't be just the two of us. Yeah, we hey, can it was make time, it if though. we try. <laughs> no, uh, no, we did we did fine. It was actually really fun just having two voices and not a guy going, Nanny? Nanny? <laughs> Camilla lost. No. Camilla lost. No. No. Tharja did not win either. <laughs> yeah, I was like, where's Tharja? Tharja. Yeah. <laughs> Quick, quick, we gotta play a clip of JoJoJo's Bizarre Adventure. No. <laughs> uh, no, but seriously, we, we'll hopefully have one of our guest hosts with us uh, next week, and then uh, we look forward to talking with you. So, for Telly's Tyler, and only that, and Triforce, I'm Triforce Tyler, ladies and gentlemen, we are out of time, but we are not out of lives. We've made it to the end of the level, so raise the flag. <laughs>